Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown. And today I'm going to be covering the Lord of the Rings role-playing game, a 2002 release by Decipher. Skills in Lord of the Rings are based around 2d6, so you're rolling them against target numbers. If we look at one of the characters towards the back here, here we go, we've opened straight to Grima Wormtongue. He'll do. So if we look, he's got his attributes here with bonuses, and he's got his skills here. So let's say he's doing an appraised gems. He's got appraised gems of plus one, and that will be a perception check. So he gets a plus one from his perception as well. So he's getting a plus two to that, plus any other modifiers. And that will be against the target number. If we look up page 217, we can see the target numbers here are simple tasks are a base target number of five, Routine 10, Challenging 15, Difficult 20, Virtually Impossible 25. And they are modified based on various conditions. So we've got physical test modifiers here. So if there's dim lighting, it'll be a 2 to the target number. So a simple task will become a 7 instead of a 5. And if you've got inadequate tools, using inferior tools, that's a plus 5. And you modify things that way. You've also got modifiers for social tests, academic tests. And the result you get is then determined against the degree of success. So if you're 11 points plus below the target number, you've got a disastrous failure. The attempt makes matters worse if possible. Um, 6 to 10, complete failure. The attempt fails and may prevent further attempts. 1 to 5, the attempt fails, but the character may try again with a cumulative minus 1 test. Result penalty. If you've received the exact target number, a marginal success. 1 to 5 above, a complete success. 6 to 10, superior success. Character performs beyond expectations. And then 11 plus above the target number. Character, uh, extraordinary success. Character performs far before expectations, possibly gaining an additional advantage, such as a positive initiative modifier in the next round, or the ability to perform an additional action at half the normal cost. Also worth noting in Lord of the Rings is the critical success system. If when you're rolling your 2d6, you roll two sixes, oh, I knocked one off there, two sixes, then you get to roll an additional dice and add. So you've got 12, you're on an additional dice, we've got another six, so we've got 18. But we keep rolling that until it stops being a six. So we've got three sixes so far, 18, we roll again, and we get a five, so we've got 23 total on the dice. Initiative is based around the swiftness uh, reaction. So if we go back to Grima Wormtongue, we can see under his reactions, he's got a swiftness of plus two. So he is rolling 2d6 plus two, he gets nine, plus two, he gets 11. So he goes before anybody who gets nine, he goes after anybody who gets 12. Now, once we've determined the order of initiative, characters get two actions. Although, depending on their edges, they may get an extra one. So, warriors can get extra ones to attack. Now, going back to uh, page 230-ish, we can see that various actions have an action cost. So... We have combat maneuvers. To aim requires one action. To delay costs zero actions. To dodge costs one. So a warrior hacking with his sword, an armed attack basic, costs one action, and he may dodge, allowing him to make a swiftness test to avoid being hit. Or somebody firing a bow, so doing a ranged attack, costs one action, or they may aim and shoot to get bonuses to hit. Of course, as well as combat actions, if we flip back a few pages, we can see there's movement, so you can crawl or step, you can walk. Uh, sprint is a full round action, you can jump. Um, actions like commanding people cost nothing, armed attacks cost one, drawing a weapon costs one action. And we've got full round actions here to hide, offer an inspirational speech, to search, to perform healing, or to repair a weapon, or require your full round. 
Now, to attack in combat, it's going to be a simple skill roll, but you're rolling against target number of the character's defense, which happens to be their nimbleness plus 10. So Grima here has a nimbleness of 8, which gives him plus 1, so he has a target number of 11 to hit. Um, he actually doesn't have any combat skills, but if we look here, the Nazgul have on combat blades plus 10. So they'll be rolling 2d6 plus 10 against Grima's target number 11. And they basically can't fail. Now for damage, if we flick over to page 205... We can see the weapons, and basically they all do 2d6 plus an amount of damage. So, a standard long sword does 2d6 plus 5 damage. Um, a scimitar does 2d6 plus 4. Now, if a target's wearing armor, then armor reduces damage. So, it absorbs the damage. So, somebody wearing leather armor takes 2 off any damage received. Somebody wearing ordinary chainmail takes 5 off any damage. So, you're rolling your damage, so sword, 2d6 plus 5, we've rolled 6, 11, against somebody wearing chain mail, so we've done 6 points of damage. Now, going back to Grima, we can see that Grima has a health of 6, but that doesn't mean that he's only got 6 hit points, that's how much damage he can take in each health level. So if we go back to page 240... Page 244, Effects of Injury. So, Grima has healthy, dazed, injured, wounded, incapacitated, and near-death health levels. And each of those contains six health. So as he takes damage, he's considered healthy until he's got six points of damage. Then he is dazed, up to 12 points of damage, where he gets performs tests at minus one. Injured, when he takes damage up to 18. Wounded, 24. Incapacitated, 30. And he is near death at 36. And he performs tests at minus 9. And once you receive damage, you can heal back at a rate of 1 point per day. Natural healing requires rest, food, and if possible, a clean and comfortable environment. As human character sleeps at least 6 hours per day, eats well, and keeps open wounds clean, he recovers 1 health point per day. So it's a very slow healing process. However, in these conditions, characters can also make stamina tests at the end of every week to recover a number of additional health points. So, you've got to make a stamina test against the target number here, and you receive your vitality points extra healing once per week. If the character receives the attentions of a healer, he makes a stamina test twice per week to recover a number of additional health points equal to his vitality modifier, a minimum of one. Failure on these stamina tests incur no ill consequences. The character just doesn't show remarkable progress in their healing. And for advancement. Although Lord of the Rings is fairly similar to Dungeons & Dragons, it's not a level-based system. If we flick over to page 278 279 here, we can see the experience awards. So, so Successful completion of the episode's primary objective, 1,000 experience. Successful completion of episode's secondary objective, 500 experience. Spending experience. When a character accumulates 1,000 experience, the player may spend the experience to allow his character to undergo an advancement. So you've got an advancement pick for 1,000 experience, and then you can choose on this table. So your order skill, plus one with any order skill for one pick. Racial skill, plus one rank with any racial skill. A speciality, one new speciality for any skill the character possesses. Or for two picks, so 2,000 experience, gain a new edge. A non-order skill, renown, reaction. For three picks, so 3,000 experience, reaction non-favored, plus one to any reaction character does not favor. Order ability, courage. For four, so 4,000 experience, an attribute favoured, plus one to the character's favoured attribute. For five, so 5,000 experience, attribute non-favoured, plus one to the attribute. Plus one health, join a new order or basic or elite order. So you can basically change class and gain new advancements for that. 
And that's how it works. It's kind of expensive because you are spending multiples of thousands of experience to gain these, but it's a fairly simple system and fairly easy to keep track of. So that's a quick look at the Lord of the Rings role-playing game. It's an interesting system. It's nothing special. I feel it's fairly Dungeons and Dragons-like, but it does have its own quirks and it could prove a lot of fun, especially if you like Lord of the Rings and the setting. Anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough as usual, so thank you very, very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment below, as it does me massive favours with the YouTube algorithm. But most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.